Here's a little taste of the five axis action with cutting the radiuses around the opening of this thing. I didn't really get good shots of the video of the machining because I had to do this in pretty much of a hurry. I had to get to the next job on the Mazak and also I had a job coming up on the horizontal so I had to kind of hurry this up so I made this little uh, um, still segment here showing the first few tools on this part which was basically a half inch end mill and then the quarter inch end mill and the spot drill there you saw and this tap drill for an eighth inch NPT and then the tap drill for the 1024 thread and a start hole and then milling the counter bores well drilling the holes for the screws and milling the counter bores and the slot for the air passage here and then uh, the rest of this I, I video recorded some of the more complicated cuts here I just didn't really have a lot of time this is a, a three-quarter inch end mill with a one-eighth inch tip radius to do the angle cuts on the inside of this uh, cavity on the front of this thing, I guess you call it. So I rotate it for each one of the four angles. Uh, well, the two sides were the same angle and then the, the um, top and bottom cuts as if you've seen it on the machine here were different angles. Here's an view from the bottom up. And then here comes the quarter inch end mill. This is a full five axis type of thing because I can't really reach below X zero on this machine so I have to cut this radius like this by using a five axis cut. Probably not the most practical way to do it, but that's the only way I could actually reach the shape. Here's a 1024 tap. There's three holes that hold the top of the air knife thing, the top piece. And then here's the eighth inch NPT. I didn't tap it to full depth. I kind of re-ran it after I gauged it there, but I didn't show that in the video. Now here we are over at the horizontal mill. I'm milling the soft jaws to hold the part. Because of the odd shape of the part, I have to mill some soft jaws. Just use a quarter inch end mill for this. I was kind of spraying WD-40 on there, so that's why you see that smoke coming off of there. So that's the soft jaws. Then um, stick the part in the vise and reestablish the X and Y zero point, the probe, just in case anything is not just exactly the same. I'll we'll come in with a three inch face mill and ju just knock most all of the material off of here real quick. There. And then um, a half inch end mill just to mill the wall and then a chamfering tool just to cut a chamfer on both sides of that. So here's the finished air knife mounted on the camera. I didn't really show making that top piece. It's pretty simple. It's just a piece of flat aluminum milled with a chamfer on it. I used a piece of uh, um, packing tape. It measured about a thousandth of an inch thick for the spacer underneath it. So the slit that the air comes through is only a thousandth wide in this case. So here I am blowing some water and I'm kind of hand holding the, the camera, the view on the left there so it's kind of shaky but I'm, I'm trying to get a, a picture of that. So then I ran it through the coolant, straight through on the, um, the coolant stream and here the camera is about, I think it's about a foot away from the tool in this case. This is the more or less the same video I posted on Instagram, a, a small section of it. Here, so that, then I wanted to get the camera closer. So I wanted to get a more extreme, you know, coolant on it, so I've moved it about three inches away from the tool here. 
and we're, we're almost in the direct coolant stream here as it deflects off the part but you can still see a usable image in this case so then I turned it around here's the finishing tool and it, it pretty much it is in the coolant stream right there so here's the finished case with that air knife on it I polished the radiuses a little bit that the air actually blows right down it curves right down that radius and go right across the lens cover. <laughs> 